What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on simulating fluids using flip fluids inside of Blender. And so in this week's video, we're gonna talk about how to set up our fluids so that they go inside of a container. So last week, we just kind of set up a fluid and let it kind of run inside of the domain box. This week, we're actually gonna have it go inside of another piece of geometry, like a cup or a bowl or something like that. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna delete out our default model, and we're gonna start by adding a cube. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Shift A to add a cube, and then I'm just going to align it with the bottom of my axis right here. So the first thing we need to do inside of flip fluids, when you have that enabled, I'll link to a video down below that shows you how to do that. But what we wanna do is we want to go into the physics properties and set this as a flip fluid. And remember the first thing we need to do is we need to set our cube as a domain. And so the domain is basically the area where flip fluids is gonna calculate the fluid, right? So this is basically the area in which everything's going to work. So now we've got our cube in here, let's go ahead and add a sphere. So we're just gonna do a shift A, we'll add a UV sphere, and I'll just move it up and I'll just scale it down like this, right? And then we're also gonna set that sphere as a fluid. So we'll just select it, go to flip fluid, and this one is going to be a fluid. And so now, if you remember, this is kind of where we got to in last week's video, right? So we could take this, we could select our domain, and we could click bake, and that would simulate this as a fluid, right? So it's gonna fall down, and then um, our fluid's gonna kind of splash up everywhere. So that is one thing that we could do, but in this case, what we wanna do before we do that, and I'm just going to reset our bake, is we're gonna add a container for this uh, sphere to go inside of. So to do that, I'm just gonna add another sphere. So I'll do a Shift A, we'll add a UV sphere. We'll move this one up, and scale it down a bit. And then I'm gonna hold Z and go into wireframe mode and tab into edit mode. And so when I tab into edit mode, then I'm gonna go into vertex select mode by tapping one. But when I go into vertex select mode, that means I can come in here and I can select all of these vertices. Then I can just type the X key and delete those vertices. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a very simple bowl shape, right? So if I hold Z, go back into solid mode, it's gonna look something like this. And let's go ahead and right click and shade this smooth, just so it looks decent. And so now, what we have is we have a sphere, we have a domain, and we have a container. And so this container is gonna be a different object type that we haven't really talked about within flip fluids. Um, this one is going to be what's known as an obstacle. And so we're gonna take this shape, and we're gonna use it as an obstacle to hold our fluid. So, we're gonna set this bowl as a flip fluid, and we're gonna set it as an obstacle. And so what you're gonna notice in here is you're gonna notice that right now, if we were to do a quick bake on this, so if we were to just bake this for a couple frames, you're gonna notice our fluid is gonna fall right through this object, right? And the reason for that is because this object doesn't have any thickness associated with it. Um, it's not really a solid, so therefore there's no interaction between these objects. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a modifier to this, and it's just going to be a solidify modifier. So we're just gonna make this thicker, just like this. And so now this object has a thickness associated with it. But now we still have a problem in the sense that if we try to run this, right? So if we have this set as our obstacle and then we bake this, it's still not going to work. And so the reason it's not going to work is because this isn't a very thick object, right? So what that means is that means that our fluid is gonna fall right through this object still, right? So we're not getting any fluid in our bowl. So I'm gonna stop and reset my bake. And so the reason for that is because if you remember inside of your domain, there's a little box in here where you set your resolution, right? Well, what your resolution does is basically the way this calculates fluid is it uses a grid, right? So it's gonna split this whole thing up into a grid. Um, I think you can even under the debug, you can actually see the grid that it's splitting everything up into. Right, so you can actually turn that on to see this. But because this is so 
thin, or it's not picking up the geometry of the object in the simulation. So there's a couple different ways we could go about this. So the first way we could go about this is we could increase this resolution, right? So if I go into my resolution inside of my settings, and I set this to something like 120, what this is going to do is this is going to go through, and now if we calculate this, it's going to calculate our fluid simulation. But notice how it's taking a lot longer, right? It's going to take something like three times as long to calculate this. So our fluid can fall in here. Notice how now it's actually intersecting with our bolt, right? But it's taking a lot longer to bake because we had to set that resolution higher in order to get it to pick up the shape that's in here, right? And I don't necessarily want to wait for four or five minutes to get this whole thing done. And granted, I've got probably way too many frames in here as well, so it's gonna make that take too long. Um, so, but that is one way to do this if you have a very thin object. What I'm gonna do for this video is instead of increasing the resolution, I'm just gonna create a new bowl. I'm just gonna make it thicker, just so that we can uh, bake this a bunch of different times and see different results. So I'm just going to add a new UV sphere, go to my front view, and I'll just do what we did before to create a new bowl. And we'll add a solidify modifier. So solidify, and this time I'm gonna set my thickness to something like one inch, which is gonna be too thick for an actual bowl. So if you're doing like a real simulation, um, you're going to want to increase your resolution. But for this video, I wanna show you more about the settings instead. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna go back into our domain settings. We'll bring our resolution back down to 65. Remember that you need to set this as an obstacle. And then we'll rebake our simulation. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this down to 100 frames instead of 250, because I don't need 250 frames in here. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on bake. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna run my simulation. Well, notice how now, because this is a thicker object, this is actually picking up the fluid inside of our bowl, right? So this fluid is falling down and then splashing out of the bowl, just like this. So because we increase the thickness of our object right here, we're getting a better result. And as we move forward, let's go ahead and switch over into material preview mode and let's set our fluid material, which you can set inside of your domain settings. We'll go down to flip fluid materials and we'll set our material as, we'll go ahead and set it as the iced water material, just so we can see this fluid a little bit better. And so notice how this gives us a really interesting result, right? So this falls down and then kind of splashes out of the bowl. Part of the reason for that is because this is a fairly large sphere floating a fair, fair amount above this object, right? So it's giving us kind of a giant splash. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and reset my bake. Then I'm gonna take this sphere and I'm gonna move it down, right? So I'm gonna move it until it's probably about level with the bottom of this bowl. So you may need to go into wireframe mode in order to see that. But notice how this is a lot lower. Well now, if I go back into material preview mode, and then I bake this again, Notice how I'm gonna get a much smaller splash. And this fluid is just gonna kinda of sit inside of this bowl, right? So it'll come to a resting state eventually, and it'll just kinda of sit inside of this bowl right here. So you can use an object to fill up a bowl like this really easily. So, and then you could kind of mess around with the scale and other things like that to get different uh, amounts of fluid sitting in our bowl later. But that's one way you could do this, another way that we could do this is we could also, instead of using a fluid object, so I'm gonna move this over, what I'm gonna use instead is I'm gonna use an inflow. And so an inflow is basically a, an inflow is basically like a uh, generator or water spawning object. So um, let's go ahead and do a shift A and let's add We'll stick with the UV spheres. So I'm gonna scale this down, move it up, we'll scale it down again. But this time, instead of setting this object as a fluid, we're gonna go into our flip fluid settings. We're gonna set this as an inflow, like this. So now this object is an inflow object. Well now, if I was to bake it, 
So we'll just reset our bake and bake this again. Notice how now what you're going to get is you're going to get water flowing out of this sphere object. And it'll basically, um, so it'll basically spit out water for as long as your simulation is running. So notice how this fluid is falling down inside of this bowl, just like this. And so notice how as we run this, this bowl fills up, right? So notice how this is running, we're getting more and more fluid inside of this bowl. And then eventually, this bowl is going to overflow, right? And we don't have this set with enough keyframes for it to get to the point where that'll overflow, but this is a way that you can basically generate fluid with an object like this. And so there's a lot of different settings you can set with the inflow objects, and we don't necessarily have to get too far into that right now, but let's say for example that we wanted this, instead of falling straight down, we could have this come out of a faucet or something like that with some forward velocity. So the way that we could do that is we could set this to have a vector velocity of maybe like two feet per second, something like that, along the x-axis, right? So I'm gonna move this along the x-axis just a little bit, and then let's do a quick bake so you can see what that does. So if I bake this, notice how this fluid is going to have a forward motion. So you can use this in order to fill up that bowl. And then one other thing you can do is you can set this to only have fluid coming out of it for a certain amount of time. Right? So you can use your inflow object and you can keyframe this being enabled right here. So the way that would work is let's go into our animation settings for a second. So we'll go ahead and set this to material preview mode. And what we're going to do is at keyframe zero, we're going to come in here. And with this enabled box checked, we're going to right click on it, we're going to click insert keyframe, right? So what that means is that means we have keyframed the fact that this is enabled at zero frames. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna set this to 20 frames and then we're gonna uncheck this box. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna click on insert keyframe. So what that means is that means that now inside of this animation, when we play it, this is only going to emit water until frame 20. So now let's take this and let's bake it one more time. So we're gonna reset our bake. We're gonna click on bake right here and we're gonna let this run for a second. All right, so once this is done, we can play our animation. So notice how what happens is that water flows out for 20 frames and then it stops and we've got our fluid in our bowl and eventually our fluid just kind of comes to a rest. So you can use this in order to simulate inflows of water from different sources inside of Blender. So now I'm going to go ahead and hide these objects. And I'm just going to do a quick rendering. So I'm just going to create a plane right here. Um, we'll go ahead and set up our other materials as well. So we'll set up the foam material, the bubble material like this. And then we'll set up the spray material just so that it's in here. And we're not going to mess around too much with those settings right now. But I'm going to, let's see, we'll extrude this up. delete out my front edges like this and we'll just tab back into object mode and we'll just add a light for now let's just add a couple point lights so let's go into rendered mode all right and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch my surface to the red wine um, just because the red looks a little bit better in this final result. So we can mess around with some other settings and stuff in the future, but for now, I just wanna set this as is. All right, so now let's just render this animation. So I'm just gonna to go to render animation. I'm just gonna render this in Eevee, um, just so it's kind of quick. Um, once you get everything kind of set up the way that you want in Eevee, you can switch over to cycles. Um, I don't really wanna wait the, um, the hour or whatever it would take in order to render out all these different frames. So we're gonna stick with Eevee for right now, just for speed's sake. And then, so here's our final result, is the fluid falling into the bowl and settling just like this. And if you wanted to, you could slow that down by going into your domain settings 
And under the fluid simulation, you could set your speed to something like 0.5. That would slow this down. Um, you'd probably want to increase your frame rate as well just to get more of the simulation in here. But you can affect the speed by adjusting your speed over here in your settings. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been trying flip fluids? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.